What's up friends? Today I'm here to share a very cool project I've been working on for a long time. I think I've probably mentioned it in another video, but I wanted to make a video dedicated to this because the main part is ready to go. Uh, I'm going to start selling it soon and I wanted to make the uh, more basic parts available to anybody who wants it and to get started immediately and then I'll develop it more and have a parts kit soon and uh, make it more uh, uh, complete uh, later on. So let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see, I have several reptiles, uh, bearded dragon, ball python, toke gecko, and the rhino iguana enclosure, which is off camera. But I, uh, have to regulate the temperatures and humidities for all their enclosures and so I've looked into uh, products that are made to control different devices like heat, ma uh, heat lamps, heat mats, um, misters, stuff like that and I've looked into the different solutions out there for controlling those things and they all seem extremely expensive for what they do. I think uh, there's a popular reptile thermostat brand, I don't remember the name of it, but when I was doing research, uh, I think it was like $100 for a uh, thermostat that controlled two heat mats. Something ridiculous. It was obscene how expensive it was for what it did. Um, the hardware involved in something like that is very simple, very low cost. Uh, even for extremely reliable hardware, it's not expensive. And so it is pretty much highway robbery. Um, a lot of people are super stuck up and they'll say that you can only get that. But I mean, I'm speaking as a mechanical engineer, that's not the case. Um, you, can, you can make or buy other uh, products and it's just as reliable. But you have to be careful. You have to do your research and you have to make sure that you know you're getting yourself into because there are some that aren't as reliable and um, obviously that can cause some pretty bad things you can kill your animal which you don't want to do so do your research but you can find less expensive options out there this is one of those less expensive options however it is for people that are more uh, do-it-yourself type preferably if you've soldered stuff or use Python um, the programming language, not the snake, um, then this is going to be perfect for you. So this is one of those options. I've made a circuit board right here that hosts a Raspberry Pi Zero or whatever Raspberry Pi you want to use. Um, it has the 40 pin connector right down here and it doesn't use all the pins so that's why I left the labels on so you could use it for other stuff if you wanted to add on to this. Um, this is capable of controlling nine devices, heat mats, misters, whatever you want. Uh, it can get data from five temperature probes and it can get data from five temperature and humidity sensors. So I'm gonna show you what I'm using it for right now. I don't have all the ports used um, I'm only using a couple of them because I don't have that many devices I need uh, control. But for people that have a lot of reptiles, this will come in super handy. Uh, way less expensive. You can build this whole thing and assemble it for um, just this board, probably $20 to $30. Um, and then you'll have to add the relays to the devices you're controlling. Um, but that's only a few more dollars and boom way cheaper than what you'd spend on like a reptile thermostat so uh let me pull up my screen capture here so this is what i'm using to um report all the measurements and stuff now the raspberry pi that is connected to the board is controlling the devices so this is just for me to look at this isn't a uh uh, an interface of any sort. It's just, uh, it just lets me see what's going on. Okay, so this is a website called Adafruit.io. I've mentioned Adafruit a lot of times in other videos. 
Um, it's really cool. Uh, you can get, I think, 30 readings per minute, so like one every two seconds, with the free version, um, which is plenty for a lot of stuff, especially simple things like this. They have a paid version. I think it's like $10 a month, and don't quote me on any of this. I didn't prepare for this at all. <laughs> I'm just going off memory. I think it's like $10 a month and you get a lot more data points, a lot more feeds. Um, so, you know, you can do whatever you need to do, uh, buy, buy a subscription or, you know, if you're like me, you probably don't need it, but might in the future, so just keep it in mind. Um, you get a certain number of feeds. I'm not sure how many. Um, I have six right now. I only use five, but uh, so there's you get at least six for free. Uh, and the dashboards, this one that you see right here. Um, and so these are the readings for my reptile enclosure that is going through this board. And the Raspberry Pi is reporting these readings to, uh, to Adafruit IO. And I'll show you how it's doing that here in a minute. Patch is my ball python. Uh, Patch's heat spot is at 37.8 Celsius. So um, through the dirt that's above the heat mat, it's a couple degrees lower. Uh, the temperature is 23, uh, the ambient temperature. So it's a little lower than I'd like. Um, I'm going to be putting like a little cover on top of the enclosure to keep the heat in. Uh, let's see. And his humidity is about 64%, which is perfect. So the toke temperature, um, I guess you can't see it in this shot, but it's 26, which is decent. Uh, it should be probably a little higher, maybe just a couple degrees. Um, I could probably turn on the ceramic heat emitter on top of the heat lamp and it would be good, but the humidity is at 95. I think that's reading a little high. I need to double check that. This is just the history of all the sensors. Um, and you can check to see if like there's any weird anomalies or whatever, and you can set it to, uh, however long you want to read. So I think these are set up for 24 hours. Okay, so now what I want to do is show you what's going on under the hood of the Raspberry Pi. This is a little more technical, and if you've never programmed with Python before, um, you might not even care to watch this part, but if you do, you know, keep watching, and you get to see uh, the logic of how um, the Raspberry Pi gets all the readings from the thermostat board and make sure everything works properly. This is the Raspberry Pi uh, console. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go look at the thermostat code. So right here, from Adafruit IO, import client feed, press error. I'm not gonna go through the libraries. Um, we're setting up our GPIOs on the Raspberry Pi, setting the patch relay, which is an ultrasonic mister, and the toke relay, which is, or I'm sorry, the patch relay is a heat mat. The Toke Relay is an ultrasonic mister. Uh, patch DHT is on GPIO, GPIO 12. Look, mouth is getting dry. <clears throat> patch DHT is on GPIO 12. Toke DHT is on GPIO 21. So AIO equal client, blah, blah, blah. I might do a tutorial about how to get AI, uh, Adafruit IO the Adafruit I.O. library working. Um, I think the tutorial on their website was a little out of date because I followed it to the letter and I could not get it working. Um, I kind of patched together a few uh, different examples that I saw elsewhere and I managed to get it to work. Um, so, Lady Ada, if you're watching this, uh, Maybe I did something wrong. If you see anything that I did wrong, let me know. Or, you know, check out the tutorial. Maybe there was an update or something, I don't know. Um, but it works great now. So, we have patch spot being reported to the patch spot feed. Um, right here we define the target for the heat mat. 
Uh, the bias is if a sensor reads high or low, you can just put in that bias right there. Um, Toke target 85, that's for the humidity. Uh, patch temperature, that's for the DHT sensor, patch humidity, Toke temperature, Toke humidity. Uh, de def get temp, that's for the DS18B20 temperature probes, uh, which are on a Dallas one wire protocol, which allows you to read data from multiple sensors using this probe identification right here uh, to identify what sensor you want to read from. And you can get it all in one wire, hence the name. Uh, and so these inputs right here on the middle one are all on GPIO 4. So you only use one GPIO for all these temperature probes. It's pretty cool. Okay, down here define get DHT. This just gets the humidity and the temperature from uh, the DHT sensors. Again, Adafruit underscore DHT dot read retry blah 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 blah. Um, that tutorial I, th I think was, I think worked just fine. Um, I always return a high value for this because the way I have my stuff set up is things turn on when it's too low and turn off when it's too high. So if it returns a high value, it'll just turn off, which is usually a better failure mode than staying on. Uh, exception is E, print E, just exception handling. Uh, so right here you get the data from the sensors. Down here you just print out what uh, the, te the sensors are reading. So right here is just handling the temperature of Patch's hotspot and the humidity of the token gecko. So if it's under the target, turn on. If it's over the target, turn off. Uh, just keeps it in a nice smooth little wave within a couple degrees. Uh, Toke humidity. If humidity is under the Tokyo target, turn on. If not, turn off. So this is something that tells me how many errors I've had. Uh, in this loop, I just put the whole thing in a try statement um, because every once in a while it'll throw an error and then, you know, if you don't have a try accept inside the while loop, then it just stops and you have to restart the program. So I just have try do everything except, you know, program error, continue loop, it'll just go through and do it again. Um, and it adds one to total errors. So when I look at it and it says like three, and then I come home later and it says seven, I know it, there was an error, there are four different errors or four errors uh, while it was running that day. Um, so yeah, that's how it operates. Um, obviously, it'll be a lot longer if you use all the ports on here, um, but it'll just be more of the same stuff. Um, but yeah, that'll let you control nine devices, read from 10 different sensors, and if you use an extra long uh, header on here, you can even plug more wires into the pins that you haven't used yet. So. A little more about the board itself. I've made this so you can either just solder directly in with your own wires or you can solder on USB, uh, female USB ports and use those as your data wires and control wires. That way you don't have to make your own um, extensions and leads and stuff. Uh, I just use a bunch of micro USB cables. I have a ton of them. Super convenient. Um, awesome. Uh, these are relay drivers. They have the flyback diode and the transistor on the board already. So all you need is either a uh, micro USB connected to the relay power pins or if you're using your own uh, cable, just two wires coming out of here. Uh, these are also wired into, these right here are also wired into these USBs. So these are just if you don't want to use the USBs. Same with these headers right here. 
Uh, if you don't want to use USBs for the sensors, you can just wire it in manually. So yeah, all you have to do is stick a relay on the device that you want to control, um, wire it in series with the neutral, um, the neutral wire, and put it on a normally open, or at least how I have mine programmed, and put it on the normally open, and all you have to do is provide power. You don't have to have a whole breakout on the device side because all the hardware is on the board. So pretty convenient. You're not dealing with any high mains voltage on the circuit board. Uh, you only have to deal with that on the device side. That's the uh, introduction to this relay board. I'm getting ready to sell these on my website so you can buy them. If you're pretty handy yourself, you can go ahead and start building your own. I'm going to put together a parts list for all the other parts that you need to complete the board. And that way you can get ready, build your own, and wire up your uh, reptile enclosures. And you don't have to spend $400 if you have three enclosures to take care of. But yeah, I will do another video about soldering together the uh, device side relays and this board probably. I'll just do an assembly video. But this was just to show how it works. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope that it was informative and I hope that you can see a use for this. Um, you don't even have to use it for reptile enclosures. You can use it to you know, grow plants. You can use it for uh, like your greenhouse or something. You can use it for really anything that you have Dallas one wire sensors and then a 3.3 volt sensor. Um, so anyway, be sure to be kind to someone today and I'll see you guys next time.